So when we go through this, we're going to cover three main things. Now, some drugs are not going to have uh, an indication. Some drugs are not going to have a high yield adverse drug reaction. And if that's the case, I'll point it out. But when we go through these drugs, we want to think about the mechanism, the indication, and the main side effects or adverse drug reactions. So the main ADRs. Um, don't worry, guys. I want you to sit back, take a deep breath, and just follow my lead. We're going to simplify all of this in a really high-yield fashion. So let's start with valproate, also known as valproic acid. So the mechanism of valproate is that we're going to inhibit or decrease the activity at voltage-gated sodium channels. In addition to that, we're going to increase the activity of GABA. So think of sodium in this lecture as like sort of excitatory. So when you decrease voltage-gated sodium channels, we decrease the excitation that causes seizures. Likewise, GABA is an inhibitory neuron. So if we increase activity of GABA, we're increasing inhibitory activity, which means we're getting inhibited, which tones down the excitation in the brain that causes seizures. So valproate decreases or inhibits the voltage-gated sodium channels and increases GABA. Valproate is really a first-line medication here. And if you're taking your exam and they want you to pick what uh, anti-epileptic drug you're going to give to somebody who has, a, you know, like a, a just a general seizure, um, a partial or a tonic-clonic seizure, and they don't um, specify a specific subtype of seizure, and you'll understand what I mean as we go through this lecture. But generically speaking, if you have to pick a first-line medication, valproate is usually your go-to. Adverse drug reactions, let's talk about a few. The ones you should know are anemia, hepatotoxicity, pancreatitis, and spina bifida, right? So, how do you remember this? Well, when you think of valproate, I want you to think of all pro. So you take the A-L-P-R-O out of valproate. So all pro. That reminds us of two things. The If we drop one of the L's, all pro stands for anemia, liver, pancreatitis, and then the little R big O reminds me of the hole that you get in the neural tube defect of spina bifida. So the O is literally just the hole or the pouch through which you have the spina bifida occurring. So all pro from valproate, all pro, anemia, liver, which is hepatotoxicity, pancreatitis, and then R big O is the little spina bifida. The other reason that I think all pro is because we need to have a way to memorize the mechanism of valproate. And if you're not a sports fan, I apologize, but an all pro athlete who is a very salty person is Des Bryant, the wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. So that's valproate, all pro from valproate. Now, let's talk about phenytoin. Phenytoin's mechanism is that you have uh, an inhibition or decrease activity at voltage-gated sodium channels. So same exact mechanism minus the GABA part. Um, there's really no main indication for phenytoin. So the adverse drug reactions that you should know about are gingival hyperplasia and fetal hydantoin syndrome. In addition to that, I want you to know that this drug undergoes zero order kinetics, which means just to refresh your memory that the drug is eliminated at a constant rate that does not change based on the amount of the drug. It's the same amount um, per hour, shall we say, that gets eliminated. And it's a P450 inducer. That's also really high yield. So how do we remember phenytoin? Well, to remember phenytoin, we're going to think about a tow truck because phenytoin, you're going to need towing by a tow truck. So if they don't salt the roads, your car will need a towing, right? Your car will need to be towed. The towing from phenytoin, and if they don't salt the roads, salt reminding us that this inhibits voltage-gated salt channels. So voltage gated salt channels. If they don't salt the roads, your car will need a tow in. And this mnemonic goes beyond just the mechanism because let's think about these things. Gingival hyperplasia. Well, I think about snow hyperplasia, right? Snow everywhere. Just like the, there's gingival hyperplasia where the cells are growing out of control. I think of salt or excuse me, snow hyperplasia. Fetal hide and toe syndrome is an easy one to remember because the word ends in toe -in and phenytoin also ends in toe -in, So you don't even really need a mnemonic to remember that. But fetal hide and toe -in syndrome, just so you know, and I, and I do suggest that you Google it, is craniofacial abnormalities and limb problems in addition, in addition to mental retardation. So that if you take phenytoin when you're pregnant, your baby could have fetal hide and toe -in syndrome, toe -in, um, and phenytoin. But again, the way that I remember the this by if they don't salt the roads, your car will need a tow in salt for the voltage gated salt channels. Um, if 
if there's a lot of snow out there, there's going to be zero order, right? There's going to be absolutely no order on the roads. Um, it's a P450 inducer. So if they don't salt the roads, you're going to be inducing tow trucks to come rescue the cars. Gingival hyperplasia. I think about snow hyperplasia, just snow everywhere, which is why you're going to need a tow in when they don't salt the roads. And then fetal height and tow in syndrome. Again, easy to remember just because it ends in tow in. So that's everything you should know about Fenny tow in. So close your eyes, think about Fenny tow in. And when you can't remember anything about this drug, just remember tow like the tow truck. Why are you being towed? Well, they didn't salt the roads, which means there's snow everywhere. There's snow hyperplasia, zero order kinetics because there's zero order on the roads. And it's a P450 inducer because we're going to have to induce the tow trucks to come dig our cars out of the snow. So that is Fenny towing. Now we're going to talk about ethosuximide. The mechanism of ethosuximide is that it inhibits the T-type calcium channels. So just remember the word calcium. If you see calcium, that's the answer. They're not going to make you pick T-type from any other type. You're going to see calcium and that's going to be the answer. The indication here, and this is a really high yield one, is absence seizures. So absence seizures are always treated by ethosuximide. The main adverse drug reaction to know is Stevens-Johnson syndrome. So the mnemonic here is really, really easy. Absence seizures suck or sucks. Um, absence for absence seizures and sucks for succamide. So absence seizures suck or absence seizures sucks. The other thing that I really want you guys to, to memorize is I have this clever mnemonic to remember all of the anti-epileptics that cause Steven Johnson syndrome. So Stevens Johnson syndrome is a really, really nasty rash that you can get. And if you get it, it can develop into something which is worse called toxic epidermal necro necrolysis. And Google what that looks like. It's hideous. But what you need to know is the drugs that cause the rash. Because if you put a patient on a drug and all of a sudden they get some nasty looking rash, then you need to stop the drug. So Stevens Johnson syndrome, one of the drugs that causes it is ethosuximide. So the mnemonic that I have to remember the different drugs that cause it are, I think about five male friends and their names are Ethan, Carl, Larry, Steven, and Johnson. This is actually a picture of the band in sync, but that's the picture I always I've always used in my own notes. So Ethan, Carl, Larry, Steven, and Johnson. And each of these names signifies a drug. So ethosuximide is Ethan. So if you give ethosuximide, you can cause Stevens Johnson syndrome and ethosuximide is represented in the group of friends by Ethan. Of course, Steven and Johnson are not drugs, but they just tell you that Ethan, Carl, and Larry can cause Steven and Johnson syndrome. So Ethan is ethosuximide. And as we go through this lecture, you'll, you'll meet Carl and you'll meet Larry. These are all drugs that cause Steven's Johnson syndrome. So now we're going to talk about carbamazepine. So carbamazepine's mechanism is that it increases the refractory period of voltage gated sodium channels. And when you increase the refractory period of anything, it means you're increasing the time that that receptor is not working. And by doing that, you're still blocking excitation. And when you block excitation, you treat seizures. High yield indication here, guys, is trigemina Neur trigeminal neuralgia. Really, really high yield. The, for some reason, they, the boards love to go after trigeminal neuralgia. They're going to describe a patient to you who has trigeminal neuralgia, and they will ask you, what drug do you give, or what's the mechanism of that drug, or what's the side effect of that drug? All of this is tied together, so, so pay close attention here. Carbamazepine causes Stevens-Johnson syndrome, and if you remember our boy band, our friends, Ethan, Carl, Larry, Steven, and Johnson, carbamazepine is represented by Carl. So Carl for carb Carbamazepine. Let's talk about trigeminal neuralgia really quickly. So trigeminal neuralgia is a problem in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve, which supplies sensory innervation to various muscles of the face in the V1, V2, and V3 distribution. You can see a picture of it right there, but basically someone has sharp shooting, lancinating pain over their cheek, up back to just over the top of the ear. That is trigeminal neuralgia. And the pain is debilitating. You will not miss this on an exam. If they give this to you on USMLE or Comlex, it's gonna be sharp shooting, stabbing, lancinating pain in the distribution of the muscles that you see here. And again, they're, in, they're innervated by the trigeminal nerve, which is why this is called trigeminal neuralgia. So when this happens, you treat with carbamazepine. And I told you that that's super high yield. So how do we remember this? My mnemonic is that you chew carbs with your cheek. So the the carbs for carbamazepine and you eat or chew carbs with your cheek. So imagine literally eating a sandwich. You're going to be using the facial muscles that are innervated from in the sensory distribution by the trigeminal nerve. So you eat carbs or you chew carbs with your cheek. That reminds me that trigeminal neuralgia 
uh, is treated with carbamazepine. So you chew carbs with your cheek. And then don't forget, Carl is carbamazepine in our group of friends. Ethan, Carl, Larry, Stephen, and Johnson. So Carl or carbamazepine will cause Stevens johnson syndrome. Now let's talk about lamotrigine. So lamotrigine's mechanism is that it inhibits voltage-gated sodium channels, and it also has activity at glutamate receptors. Now, uh, lamotrigine also is one of the drugs that causes Stevens-Johnson syndrome. So Larry is lamotrigine. So we're done with our group of friends now. We talked about Ethan, which is ethosuximide. We talked about Carl, who's carbamazepine. And now we're finishing with Larry, who is lamotrigine. So those three friends or those th three drugs will cause Stevens-Johnson syndrome. So that's really, really high yield. How do we remember that this has activity not only at voltage-gated sodium channels, but also at glutamate receptors? This is really high yield um, as far as mechanisms go because it's the only drug that has activity at both voltage-gated sodium and glutamate receptors. So from the perspective of the seizure, and this is our cartoon seizure, from the perspective of the seizure, if you give somebody lamotrigine, it has two mechanisms at two different receptors. So the seizure, who really wants you to keep seizing, the seizure looks at this double mechanism going on and says, wow, you're attacking me at two receptors? That's LAMO. LAMO for lamotrigine. So from the perspective of the seizure, the seizure's like, oh, it's so lame. You're turning me off at voltage-gated sodium and glutamate receptors. LAMO for lamotrigine. Um, and then don't forget Lamotrigine is Larry Stevens Johnson syndrome. So we're flying guys. I hope you're able to keep up here, but it's not that bad if you get these mnemonics down. Let's quickly talk about some of the easier ones to remember now. So these are uh, benzodiazepines and barbiturates. And really the only thing that you need to know about these guys is their mechanism. So they increase the activity at the GABA A receptor. And the way that they do this is that benzos increase the frequency of chloride channel opening and barbiturates increase the duration of chloride channel opening. And this, I want to pause for a second because this is really, really high yield. It's not difficult to remember, but it's high yield because exams love to go after the differences in these mechanisms because the only difference is the word frequency or the word duration. And you will see a question on this in some question bank, maybe even on your USMLE or Comlex. So let's talk about this. How do you remember which one's frequency and which one's duration? Well, instead of saying barbiturate, I want you to say barbiturate, barbiturate. So dur for duration. So barbiturates increase the duration of chloride channel opening and benzos increase the frequency of chloride channel opening. So if you remember the barbiturate, just by process of elimination, you'll know that benzos have to be frequency. So that's barbiturate for dur for duration. Um, the only other thing is that you should know that benzos are used as abortive means of stopping a seizure. So if someone's seizing on the table and you need to stop the seizure, you, you give them a benzo. Um, that's really all you need to know about benzos and barbiturates as far as uh, seizures are concerned. We're going to talk now about levetiracetam. So the mechanism is unknown, and you may think that that's something that you won't be asked, but I have seen the question come up, and the answer is unknown mechanism. Or maybe in the clinical vignette, they'll say, a drug with an unknown mechanism, blah de blah de blah what's the drug? So you got to know that levetiracetam is an unknown mechanism. I know that sounds funny, sounds stupid, but just know it. So how do we remember this? I want you to think, when you think of levetiracetam, I want you to think of a magician making somebody levitate. How does he do the levitate trick? I don't know. That's, I don't know, reminds me that the mechanism is unknown. So how do you levitate? I don't know. Unknown mechanism. I just don't know. Levitate for levetiracetam. I mean, how simple can we get, guys? I'm really boiling this down. Let's talk about two of the lower yield drugs that I've included for completeness sake. Tiagabine and Vigabitran. And I'm probably butchering the pronunciation here, but who cares? Mechanism. GABA. It has activity at GABA. Um, the way that you remember this is you look at the name, Tiagabine and Vigabatrin. So GAB or GABA is in the name. It's got activity at GABA. That's literally all you need to know. So if you see this drug and they ask you the mechanism, look at the name, take the guess, and take the easy point. We're going to finish up um, with topiramate. So topiramate's mechanism is that it, it inhibits voltage-gated sodium channels, just like a lot of the other drugs we've talked about today. Um, how do we remember this? Well, in, with topiramate, I want you to think of a topirate mate or a pirate ship. Here's our pirate ship. And just so you know, a pirate ship sails on salt water, salt for voltage gated salt channels. So that's it, guys. That is all the anti-epileptic drugs. That is all of their mechanisms, all with mnemonics all of the high yield indications and adverse drug reactions. Some things in closing and in summary that I would like you to remember is 
uh, Carl, Larry, Ethan, Stephen, and Johnson, the five friends who cause Stevens Johnson syndrome. You can remember Ethan, Larry, and Carl as ethosuximide, lamotrigine, and carbamazepine. Remember that carbamazepine treats trigeminal neuralgia. Remember that ethosuximide treats absence seizures. And remember some of the other stuff as far as mechanisms are concerned. And when you're learning the mechanisms, it's something that you just unfortunately have to memorize. So go back and use these mnemonics because they're free points. Good luck.